A lot depends on regulation, and that is what we are going to talk about now. And with nobody less than Klaus Löber, chair of the CCP Supervisory um, Committee at the European Securities and Market Authority, short ESMA. So, Mr. Löber, the floor is yours, and thank you very much for taking the time to uh, bring us up to speed. Thank you so much. and. Uh... Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to deliver this keynote speech here before such a distinguished audience. Of course, I would have preferred to be able to attend in person and to have some in-person discussions with some of you, but uh, in these times we have to be flexible, I'm afraid. I would like to thank in particular the host for inviting me to speak about the evolving risks in the domain of central clearing services. This also provides me with an opportunity to share with you how ESMA and the relevant supervisory authorities in the European Union are coordinating their efforts to respond to the evolving clearing landscape. As a start, allow me to spend a few words on the establishment of the CCP Supervisory Committee at ESMA, which started operation in 2020. The establishment of the CCP Supervisory Committee represents the most visible EU regulatory response to the need to enhance the supervisory framework for CCPs serving the European financial markets. As you will know, the Supervisory Committee is composed of representatives from national competent authorities responsible for the supervision of EU CCPs, as well as from central banks issuing union currencies referenced by financial instruments cleared by authorized or recognized CCPs. It also encompasses two independent members, Ms. Nicoletta Giusto and Ms. Falkling Wendt, as well as myself acting as chair of the committee. The supervisory committee has a mandate to ensure that risks stemming from authorized or recognized CCPs are adequately addressed, monitored, and assessed. It is tasked with promoting supervisory convergence in the supervision of EU CCPs, as well as with monitoring and supervising recognized third country CCPs, in particular those that are systemically important for the union. Supporting the supervisory committee, ESMA created a CCP directorate, which is also in charge of other CCP related tasks entrusted to ESMA. This includes the completion of the CCP rulebook under EMIR, but also advancing the new framework for CCP recovery and resolution. These tasks are promoted through a dedicated CCP policy committee. And actually, we are currently seeking for expressions of interest in a consultative working group supporting the policy committee. So I hope I can incentivize some of you to consider expressing interest in this. And also soon, we are going to establish a new CCP resolution committee as foreseen under the new regulation on CCP recovery and resolution. Under this new setup, ESMA is given a central role in the overall EU regulatory and supervisory framework for CCPs. In order to perform its increased role, a key strategic objective is to further enhance ESMA's analytical capacity and market intelligence, which is being done inter alia by leveraging on a closer cooperation with competent authorities and central banks, regular industry outreaches on topical issues, and here some of you may have attended the recent and, in my view, quite successful workshop on CCP margins and procyclicality, a format that we are going uh, to pursue further in the next months, as well as through an increased active engagement in international regulatory work of relevance to CCPs. My ambition is here to further strengthen the CCP Directorate, not only to continue to conduct all required assessment and monitoring activities, and these are activities concerning the risk posed to and by CCPs, but also to engage in deepened analytical and research activities to anticipate potential risks stemming from emerging market developments and technological innovation. Indeed, CCPs operate in a highly dynamic ecosystem, which is exposed to continuous changes, including technological changes, such as digitization and automation. Moreover, financial innovation brings new products suitable for clearing, such as derivatives on tokenized assets, emissions allowance, and products denominated in digital currencies. As a result, the risk posed to and by CCPs continuously evolve. ESMA will have to address these developments proactively 
to ensure CCP's resilience in view of those evolving risks and to make sure that new services and activities are provided only if and where risks have been properly identified, understood and managed. From a supervisory perspective, in order to be able to respond to evolving CCP risks, ESMA will rely to a considerable extent on the powers given to the new CCP Supervisory Committee, both in respect of enhanced convergence in the supervision of EU CCPs and also in the recognition and supervision of third country CCPs. Let me start with supervisory convergence, which aims to ensure that the requirements in EMIR are applied comprehensively and consistently to EU CCPs and that the supervisory activities of national competent authorities are fully aligned when mitigating risk for financial stability. The recent review of EMIR has significantly enhanced the toolkit for supervisory convergence. Besides discussing and opining on relevant supervisory decisions and establishing common practices across the EU in the CCP Supervisory Committee, there are two key tools for enhanced supervisory convergence, peer reviews and CCP stress tests. Peer reviews of the supervisory activities of national competent authorities are conducted annually and have already proven to be successful in defining best practices and identifying inconsistencies or divergencies in the application of regulatory requirements. The Supervisory Committee will select in an agile manner the most topical themes for the next cycles of peer reviews, take into account market developments and emerging risks. Moreover, CCP stress tests are also conducted annually to measure the level of resilience of CCPs against common stress scenarios and to identify issues to follow up as appropriate by general convergence initiatives or by individual supervisory actions. Building on the experience gains over the previous rounds of stress tests, the committee is currently enhancing the framework for CCP stress tests. It set up a standing group of experts to deal with the methodological aspects uh, and the aim is actually to develop a multi-year plan for CCP stress tests covering a wide spectrum of sources of systemic risk. The committee is about to launch the next round of stress tests and is currently refining the stress scenarios to be applied, which could entail, for instance, a linkage of credit and concentration risk, or by developing new models addressing operational risk, including cyber risk and environmental risk. Turning to the recognition and supervision of third country CCPs, the new regime introduced by EMEA 2.2, which has given ESMA more wide ranging powers is a response to the need to address the risks posed by those third country CCPs that are systemically important to the financial stability of the union or one or more of its member states. They are called tier two CCPs, as you never know. Under this new regime, in September 2020, ESMA decided to temporarily recognize the three UK CCPs as third country CCPs as of 1st of January this year with uh, effect until 30 of June next year. This was done in order to avoid cliff effects in the clearing domain and to minimize risk to financial stability at the end of the Brexit transition period, in line with the underlying temporary equivalence decision adopted by the European Commission. As you well know, the two uh, UK CCPs have been recognized as tier two, namely Ice Clear Europe and LCH Limited. Under EMEA 2.2, ESMA has direct supervisor responsibilities for these tier two CCPs and is currently finalizing its supervisory program and processes to ensure an effective ongoing supervision, as well as to deal with potential emergency situations that may arise. We are seeking here an efficient cooperation with the Bank of England in order to optimize the respective supervisory activities and to mitigate possible frictions. ESMA, through the CCP Supervisory Committee, will ensure that Tier 2 CCPs continue to comply with the relevant requirements on an ongoing basis and offer their clearing services to the EU financial markets under a level playing field with EU CCPs. Finally, also to mention that there are currently 34 third country CCPs that are already recognized under the old EMEA regime. ESMA will have to review their recognition in the course of this year to assess whether they can continue to provide services in the EU as non-systemically important or as systemically important CCPs. Following the recent equivalence decision by the European Commission with respect to the CCPs registered 
with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, ESMA is about to uh, resume the process for the recognition of those CCPs supervised by the SEC. Moving forward, the CCP Supervisory Committee will to continue to monitor developments in the recognized CCPs, their jurisdictions, and will review the recognitions on a regular basis. Allow, allow me to focus on the second part of my speech on some major risk emerging in the domain of CCPs in connection with recent market and environmental developments. In particular, I would like to touch on an unaccomplished structural change implied by Brexit, as well as certain risks emphasized by the COVID-19 pandemic, and to conclude with some reflections on environmental risk and interdependencies. Starting with the post-Brexit changes, while the temporary recognition of the UK CCPs has allowed for a smooth transition from the previous EU CCP regime to the new third country regime, at the same time, Brexit resulted in two major CCPs of systemic importance for the Union to operate from outside its jurisdiction. From an EU perspective, as I already noted on another occasion, in the clearing space, we may not yet have seen the full implications of Brexit. Whereas in the trading sector, we witnessed the relocation of quite some trading activities from the UK into the EU or elsewhere. In the clearing domain, there have been less pronounced developments, certainly uh, caused also by the temporary recognition of UK CCPs. The Supervisory Committee is tasked to carefully analyze potential risks, dependencies and stability implications that result from the current situation and its potential evolution. It will also consider the effects of initiatives to continue building the capital markets union, which may further incentivize clearing with EU CCPs. Moreover, in accordance with the mandate, by mid-2022, the Supervisory Committee will assess whether services provided by the two Tier 2 CCPs, or some of the services, are of such a systemic nature that it is deemed too substantial to be safely provided from abroad. To this end, ESMA is currently defining a methodological framework for the assessment of the relevant systemic risks and supervisory implications. Also take into account the costs and benefits that may result from a potential relocation of clearing services. In conducting this assessment, the committee will collect and consider a wide range of quantitative and qualitative information, engage with all relevant stakeholders and consult relevant authorities. I'm very much looking forward to such engagements, which will probably entail many of you in the course of this year. The final goal is to propose a sound and objective decision on this matter in the interest of the financial stability of the EU, its member states and market participants, followed by consequent implementation measures. Moving to the risks that were highlighted in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, in early 2020, uh, we have witnessed exacerbated market volatility, comparable to or even exceeding past crisis events. During this period, EU CCP's risk models generally performed well, which is also due to the anti-procyclicality requirements that are already implemented by CCPs in the EU in compliance with EMIR. These clearly help minimizing margin calls and liquidity pressures on clearing members, also in comparison to what could be witnessed in some other jurisdictions. In order to further support international efforts to evaluate the efficiency of anti-procyclicality tools, uh, ESMA has launched a review of the measures adopted by EU CCPs. To this end, ESMA is engaging with market participants to exchange views and experience, and we will follow up on the findings at the EU or global level as appropriate. A further risk emphasized by the COVID-19 pandemic is operational risk. During lockdowns and other forms of restrictions to local mobility, CCPs had to adapt to new working conditions and adjusted business continuity procedures. Again, it was comforting to see that EU CCPs continue to operate without noticeable disruptions, sometimes with up to 100% of their staff working from home to remote working arrangements. Operational resilience of information and communication technology has been key supporting uh, this modus operandi at CCPs, as was the case at other financial firms and also public authorities. This also intensified the momentum for various initiatives at the EU level aimed to foster the operational and cyber resilience of financial entities. This will also have a bearing on CCPs, 
and I would like to recall three significant such developments. From a regulatory perspective, in October 2020, the Commission launched, in the context of its digital finance strategy, a new legislative initiative for digital operational resilience, the so-called DORA Act, designed to consolidate and upgrade ICT requirements across all financial entities operating in the EU to ensure all firms are subject to a common set of standards to mitigate ICT risks. Also, already in 2018, the ESCB developed a European framework to test and improve the resilience of financial infrastructures, uh, better known under the acronym TIBA EU. Uh, the TIBA EU framework is currently being implemented in several member states and by the ECB, and we take a particular close look as to its suitability also in the CCP domain. Finally, from a supervisory convergence perspective, the CCP Supervisory Committee is going to review supervisory activities in respect of CCP's operational and cyber resilience in order to identify and promote best practices in this field. Moving now on to environmental risk, as this is becoming an increasingly pressing concern, and not only for supervisors. Global warming has increased the likelihood of extreme weather events, natural disasters, and potentially other environment-driven disruptions. These events may affect the CCP in various ways, so for instance, for direct impact on market prices of assets, in particular for commodities, or through a direct or indirect impact on its business continuity following operational disruptions. However, extreme weather events and natural disasters are not the only source of environmental risks. For instance, there is transition risk, consisting of the sharp uh, change in asset prices following a technological and or regulatory change. Business risk and legal risk are also to be considered in this context, although these risks normally produce effects over a longer time horizon that is usually considered in CCP stress test scenarios. The recent review of the ESMA regulation, combined with EMEA 2.2, have mandated ESMA to include also scenarios reflecting the risks stemming from adverse environmental developments in its stress tests. As a first response, and in order to develop EU-wide scenarios, the CCP Supervisory Committee initiated initial reflections to identify such scenarios relevant to CCPs. Finally, I would like to briefly highlight the importance of identifying and monitoring risks stemming from interdependencies between CCPs and between CCPs and their clearing members and service providers. In particular, the interconnection between banks and CCPs can be a critical channel of propagation of systemic risk. Again, ESMA has included interdependencies in its mapping exercises and has conducted a knock-on impact analysis in its stress tests, and it will continue focusing on this as a matter of priority, including looking more closely at the possibility of system-wide stress tests. Moving forward, the Supervisory Committee will also consider fire drills and crisis simulation exercises as valuable tools to further analyze the interdependencies and the systemic impact of a CCP failure on the ecosystem in which it operates. In conclusion, let me reiterate that whilst the political, economic, technical and environmental landscape in which CCPs operate is quickly evolving, the recent changes in the powers of ESMA and the establishment of the CCP Supervisory Committee have provided the Union with a robust structure to respond to challenges and emerging risks. In particular, ESMA and the CCP Supervisory Committee will continue to assess and monitor old and new CCP risks on an ongoing basis in order to identify and minimize any systemic impact for the financial stability of the Union, its member states and market participants. Yet, I believe there is no reason for complacency. As markets and business provision evolve outside and inside the EU, it is paramount that the existing structures, including the supervisory framework, are being constantly re-evaluated in order to make sure that risk of systemic relevance for the Union as a whole are met with corresponding mechanisms, enabling a coherent EU-wide perspective and response. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, we only have time for a very short question, which would be what are the top short-term priorities for CCPSC for 2021? Thank you very much. Actually, I think the main focus of external attention certainly will be on the supervision of third country CCPs, including uh, the ongoing review of the tier two recognitions. However, from my side, I see equally 
the priority being on the EU CCPs. First, on the day-to-day -day, uh, evaluation, validation of model changes, uh, decisions by colleges to make sure that there is indeed a consistency in the application of requirements to EU CCPs, and also the conduct of the stress tests, which, as I would like to remind, does not only cover the EU CCPs, but also the two Tier 2 CCPs in the UK. Thank you so much, Klaus, and uh, thanks a lot for your time and for your insights, and have a good day. Many thanks. So, um, <clears throat> dear viewers, uh, we are heading into a short break now, and right after the break, there will be two streams at the same time, like parallel streams, which uh, is A, stream two, uh, a panel discussion on volatility investing in 2021, and stream four will be on the topic of technology and innovation. The panel will... Uh, will focus on digital securities and tokenization, uh, the future of capital markets. Thank you very much, and we'll see you right after the break. <laughs>